Our two communities, Blessed Frederick Ozanen and St. Patrick's, on behalf of Father Joseph Grima from Blessed Frederick Ozanen and from myself and Father Greg and Jiwa from St. Pat's, a warm greeting to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphas at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to me, to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. And he said on them, A very large, large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread, spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead, ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The class were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowd who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. The servant of the Lord said, 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. And the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Come into your cause to the Lord, let him deliver. Let him rescue the one who Of silver, and from that moment 
he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of an event, bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a certain man, and say to him, The teachers say, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, Surely no time, Lord. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely no time, Rabbi. You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went up to the Mount of the Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of this flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, The will become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so they called the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake for me with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs. From the chief priests and the elders of the people, now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. And once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him, Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus 
put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slaves of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the cross, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though were I abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him in a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the bird, in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witness came forward. And last took him forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his cross and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat on his face and struck him, and some slept him, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ. Who is it that struck him? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse in his sword of love. I do not know the man. At the moment, the call closed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the call closed, you will deny me three times. And he went out and went bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the poorer spirit as a place to bury the foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price 
had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the porter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge. So that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, any one they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called the Christ? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent a word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor of the end said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all, all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and then after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldier of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and kneeled before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own cross on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrenae named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted, he would not drink it. But when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by berated him, shaking their hands, heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. 
Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At the moment, the curtain of the temple were torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tomb also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over him, over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were terrified and said, Truly this man was about the son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had pro provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away, and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Today Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey with his disciples. When he entered the gate of Jerusalem, a very large crowd greeted him with cheers and shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then the disciples were proud of their teacher, Luke. He is our teacher, and the people of Jerusalem were shouting our teacher's name in joy. However, they never imagined that Jesus would suffer and die cruelly in a few days. They never thought one of his disciples would betray him and sell him. And Peter, who was the leader of the twelve, 
disciples deny him. Who would imagine that the crowd was shouted, Hosanna would shout, let him be crucified. They never imagined Jesus' crucifixion when he entered the gate of Jerusalem. We entered Holy Week with Jesus Christ. A few weeks ago, we never thought we would celebrate Holy Week in this way. We are here with Jesus Christ and we are facing panic, sadness, confusion, anger. We are asking and crying to God, why is this happening? Where is God? We are crying with Jesus Christ who cried on the cross, Eli, Eli, let us salatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We ask this question when we experience great suffering, when we lose many people because of terror, and when refugees lost their lives in the sinking of the boats, and when we had to go through suffering that we couldn't understand. I don't know the answer. However, I am praying and hoping in this hopeless moment, as Abraham believed in hope against all hope, and Jesus believed in hope on the cross. The 22nd Psalm that Jesus said on the cross starts with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A voice of a person who is crying out to God to save him from the thoughts and torments. But at the end of this song, the person is singing because of God's mercy and love with gratitude. As Psalm, as Psalm 20 seconds continues, he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before Him. In this holy week, we know we will celebrate Easter next Sunday. We will sing Alleluia, and we will praise God's victory over death and sin. However, we don't know when we will celebrate the Holy Eucharist together as a community at the church. We don't know when we will be able to open the church's doors again, but I hope and pray to God to save us as God the Father saved Jesus and us through the resurrection. And I see Jesus Christ who hung on the cross for us. He didn't run away from the cross for himself. But he did not die for us. I choose to offer my sacrifice and share my love for others by my prayer rather than being selfish or focusing on surviving from this virus. In this holy way, I offer my sacrifice with, with my little prayer for the people who are dying, who died because of this virus. I pray for the people who lost their loved ones, and I also pray for the people who were on the front line of fighting the coronavirus. We will see each other as St. Patrick's parish when this storm goes away.
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, recognizing the suffering of all humanity at this time, let us join our prayers to Christ's perfect sacrifice on the cross and offer our intercessions for the good of the whole Church, the swift end to this pandemic, and the needs of all who suffer. For all Christians called to hope in the power of Jesus Christ and, in, and be witness to His light, for the clergy who will lead us in prayer during Holy Week through the media, and for hearts and lips to rejoice when God works His wonders through others. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For government and medical leaders in the important, important and critical decisions they make, for trusting and peaceful spirit in the face of fear and uncertainty, and for those fa facing difficulties to support their families. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling in business and the arts due to closures, for the well-being of all health care providers and first responders who offer their service to their communities, and for the lonely, the sick, and the recovering. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For speedy healing for all suffering from the coronavirus, for those who care for them, and for researchers working to develop a vaccine or to find a cure. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners who are unable to attend the Eucharist, for all who have died recently, and for those in isolation. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously look upon the suffering of your church, O God, and grant that your Son, who humbled himself for our salvation, may shower his mercy upon us, sustain our hope, and give us strength to bear each other's burdens. Through Christ our Lord.
praying, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the face and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by your own de our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them out to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed away, has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and Christ, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that from the rise of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her faithful spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Patrick, blessed Ozanam, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence. We are now for our failing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, and with your servant Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, 
there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just invite uh, Father Joe to say a uh, word of my message to the community of Blessed Frederick. Hi everyone, um, we're celebrating Holy Week together with St. Patrick's community, and so I'll be giving you a daily update in, on our website, it will be posted on our website, a little bit of a video, just giving instruction and um, a little bit of a reflection in terms of the particular day that we're celebrating. But all of our liturgies of Holy Week will be celebrated here together with the St. Patrick's community, and uh, we'll praise the Lord and then pray with each other in this way this year. Thank you. So stay tuned. So just a reminder of what I mentioned earlier, to invite people to put a branch on their window as a sign of solidarity with Jesus on Palm Sunday. And you might even want to take a picture of that if you can post it on our parish website. Secondly, for Holy Thursday, uh, the liturgy will be posted hopefully by 7 o'clock on Thursday evening. And so I invite you on Holy Thursday to gather as a family to share some prayer intentions. And you might even think about washing each other's feet and then ending that ritual with an Our Father. And so finally, again, just to remind you to check our parish websites, both the website of Blessed Frederick Osman and the website of St. Patrick's Parish for the updates and times of all these liturgies. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Receive this blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom your Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. And so for our closing hymn, we'll be singing, Jesus, remember me. Jesus.